Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back. This is GHS InfoSec. It has been a while since I've been able to record and put out a video, so I do apologize for that. However, um, I do appreciate you for sticking around. I appreciate all my recent subscribers. Um, I am into the 70s at this point. Um, I'm truly thankful. My goal at this point is to reach 100 subscribers by the end of the year. I think that's a pretty modest goal. Um, today we're going to be looking at the MemLab CTF. Specifically, we're going to be looking at Lab 4. I'm not going to bother with the introduction this time. I'm just going to get right into it. Lab 4 is called Obsession, and so we're just going to go ahead and take a look at that. This is a medium level of difficulty challenge, and if the page will load here, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this challenge. And our challenge description says, my system was recently compromised. The hacker stole a lot of information, but he also deleted a very important file of mine. I have no idea how to recover it. And the only evidence we have at this point is the time of the memory dump. Please help me. Note this challenge is composed of only one flag. And this is the flag format that we're looking for. It's INCTF and then some lead string. And there, give us a link to the challenge file. I've already downloaded that and extracted it. So I'm gonna switch over to my terminal. And if we take a look here, I've already got the memory dump lab4.raw file extracted. So let's go ahead and get started with volatility. Um, it's been a little bit since I've actually done these challenges and um, messed with volatility, volatility in general. So uh, you're going to see me stumble a little bit, but that's all right. Um, I have kind of walked through this challenge on my own again just to kind of refresh things so I can give you guys information as I go along. But with that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and get started. And we're going to say volatility, give it our input file, which is the memory dump lab4.raw. And we're going to get the image info so we can figure out what type of uh, image this memory capture was taken from. And if you recall from my previous videos, we are using volatility version 2. Um, I think for these challenges, that is a much better version to use. It's based on Python 2, and uh, I'll have a link in the description on how you can install that. Um, it's a little bit tough because Python 2 is no longer supported, but uh, once this comes back with our image profile, we'll take a look at it and see what we got. Okay, and it says that our suggested profiles here are Win7 SP1X64, SP0, Win2008R2. Uh, this is most likely not going to be a server. I'm just going to go with the first one here. Uh, so I've got that copied to my clipboard. And we're going to go up here and say dash dash profile equals paste this in, Win7SP1X64. And let's go ahead and do a PS list to see what processes we're running on this file. Uh, this is just kind of my methodology. I'm not a digital forensics expert or anything. This is just kind of how I go through uh, these challenges and looking at memory. So um, I'm using Tmux. I really love Tmux. The nice thing about it is you can kind of page up and down um, your screen output. Uh, so we're going to see on the left side we have our offset column the name of the process, the process ID, and the parent process ID. These things are important to keep in mind when you're looking for malicious things, especially if you have a memory dump, uh, the number of threads, handles, and sessions, as well as the start times. So just looking through here, it looks like we just have some typical Windows processes at this point. We have a Google crash handler, uh, our dump it.exe, which is probably what the lab creator used to get this memory and then we also have uh, sticky knot.exe I guess that's the uh, sticky note application I don't know if you guys recall from Windows 7 but it had that little sticky note app where you could make sticky notes uh, so that's that's what we got for processes and just for uh, just for GP I'm gonna do a PS tree the PS tree plugin will let you see a tree view of what processes belong to which parents so if we go down through this real quick obviously the system process is at the very top and sms s.exe is a child process to system you can see it's indented by one period here and then for a uh, a deeper look at some when init is the parent process to lsas that's the process that uh, stores your username and passwords in clear text in memory which is very handy if you are ever trying to steal credentials off of something if you're doing some red team ops and services.exe 
is on the same level as LSAS. And then a child process of services, you have three of them, task host and two SVC host processes. Um, and then underneath SVC host, it is the parent to DLL host. So you can see how these uh, processors are kind of treed out and how they, how they live there. So that's those. Uh, the next thing I want to take a look at, because um, I don't really see too much interesting other than the sticky note. Uh, we might actually go ahead and dump that memory real quick. So to do that, I'm going to take a look at the volatility help menu. And we're going to look at the list of plugins. And I believe the plugin name is MemDump. And you can see right here, uh, this thing here, it says MemDump and dumps the addressable memory for a process. And if we keep going up, we saw that process ID is 2432. We can see that right here. So let's go ahead and let's run our command here. And we'll say MemDump. And we're going to specify the dump directory with a capital D, a dot to say this directory, a dash capital Q for the, nope, excuse me, we're going to actually, let's take a look at the help menu for memdump. I'm thinking about uh, dump files. I know dump files, you give it the offset number. Uh, we want the PID, so we're going to give it a dash P. Uh, but we do have to specify a dump directory, so we'll give it a capital D. For this directory and we'll say dash lowercase p 2432 for the uh, process id of that memory and we'll just hit enter and we should get a dump file of sticky note.exe or sticky not.exe and we can take a look at this um, real quick before we go any further let's just uh, run strings on this uh, mem dump to see what strings are in here and I always like piping this to less because anytime you look at the strings of any type of binary file or memory dump or image or whatever you're gonna get a lot of output so <clears throat> we're just gonna kind of scroll through this and see if we can find anything interesting in here so far there is not much jumping out okay we have a computer name the computer name is Tupac. We can see that right here. Uh, he must be a rap fan. Um, let's see. I mean, a username of Slim Shady. <laughs> May I have your attention, please? Will the real Slim Shady please stand up? <laughs> All right, enough of that. Um, let's see. We have the sticky note.exe, so it looks like uh, Slim Shady must have been using sticky note. We're going to keep going down here. All right, looks like we have a little bit of padding, some XML data. Nothing really too interesting in that. Um, some more padding, some more processes or environment variables, it looks like. Uh, we'll take a look at the environment variables after we scope out this memory, uh, this uh, process information. Uh, but we do have, excuse me, we do have... Uh, uh, some information here. This must have been a sticky note on this thing. It says the clipboard plugin works well, but it doesn't give the flag and a uh, little emoji sticking out the tongue. So, okay, so the clipboard plugin, um, I'm not very familiar with that, but it's it's telling us we don't have the flag in the clipboard plugin. But uh, just so you guys can see, we will take a look at that plugin real quick. Um, and I believe it's just clipboard. looks like it is so if there was anything in the clipboard uh, of the user at the time of this memory dump we should get some kind of data out of this and there may have been something but um, I'm not real familiar with this plugin anyway so we have some information we have uh, some handles uh, a couple of objects most likely these are going to be offsets of where the clipboard data would be but again I'm not real familiar with that and we know from our little sticky note that that's that's not going to be anything we're interested in so we're going to skip that so let's go ahead and look at uh, environment variables again with the Ian Vars plugin and just like before I'm going to pipe this in the less because that that really puts out a lot of information okay so um, unlike some of our previous challenges, um, it doesn't look like there's anything Base64 encoded in here, at least not yet. Uh, but we do see, again, our computer name, 
we have our, our temp directories, um, typical uh, program files paths, um, our executable paths uh, in our path variable here. So anything in these paths will get executed. These may be something of interest to us if we were to be looking for some type of um, uh, unquoted service path uh, execution where some malware got a hold of an unquoted service path or a malicious actor was inside the computer. Um, I don't know that we're going to have anything like that because those paths, um, if they don't have quotes, they're not going to, you're not going to be able to hijack that path and, and execute anything out of the ordinary. So that's probably okay. So nothing too interesting there. What we can do real quick um, before we do that is we can grep for users and we can see what users uh, may have had a profile on this machine. Uh, so there's public, we have Eminem, Slim Shady. <laughs> uh, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, we could also just run the... Uh, hash dump I believe I believe that's a plugin in here and that should return us some user data and it does so we have uh, four users we have administrator guest which are our default uh, on Windows users and then we have Eminem and Slim Shady so uh, that's interesting so we at least have two users that we could look for some stuff here uh, so let's go ahead and run a CMD line uh, plug in just to see what may have been running from the command line at that time because there may have been something there all right so we have our sticky note process i'm going to scroll up and take a look at what other things we had going on here uh, typical windows processes sms s cs rss things like that those do not look out of the ordinary at all um all right, we don't want to do that i don't want to I forget sometimes in Tmux, it's not the same as less when you're scanning through that. The uh, space bar sets your uh, copy and paste mode, and uh, I don't want to do that right now. So typical Windows processes, uh, nothing really fancy here. I'm just going to page down. We have explorer.exe, sticky note. Okay, so nothing extra that we've seen so far. So most likely, um, I did not see a CMD process, so I don't think the consoles plugin is going to find us anything either. But I like to run it anyway just to see. And all we see is the process from dumpit.exe, which is the tool used to capture the memory. So uh, that's not going to help us much so let's go ahead and uh, let's just revisit the challenge real quick it says the hacker stole a lot of information but also deleted a very important file so let's go ahead and run a file scan because we are most likely going to find something that we want here uh, so i'm going to say file scan and i'm just going to go ahead and output this to a file if i can hit the correct keys and i'm just going to call this file scan and while this runs uh, we're just going to capture all the information on all the files that were present in the memory at this time and we're going to see if we can extract those files uh, that way. So taking a quick look we have file scan so let's run less on file scan and we're going to see if there's anything interesting that kind of jumps out to us off the bat. If not we will take a look for uh, specific things we can kind of pare down our search because we know the usernames um, we could also just search for a user path so let's see not seeing anything too interesting here at the moment uh, we have some links Eminem has a few things it looks like here uh, we have a screenshot link is there a screenshot file I'm gonna look for screenshot one and just do a search uh, and we'll paste that in so we can do that here nothing there okay let's see if we can try that one other way let's uh, let's file scan grip screenshot one and see what we find so we do have a PNG file so I'm going to go ahead and copy this offset and see what we may find on this screenshot. And so to do this, we'll run the dump files plugin, I believe is what it is. I get dash capital D, specify this directory, dash capital Q to put in the offset. 
and the dash in uh, parameter will just give it the it will let it use the file name uh, that it finds when it finds it in the uh, file scan or in the, the memory dump so we're gonna run this real quick okay and we have that and if we run file on screenshot one and this is the file name it gets it's really kind of clunky but um, this is just kind of the way I always dump those things here you probably could give it a better name than that but I'm lazy and dash in is a lot easier to run with so it looks like this is a PNG image and we can verify that with uh, we can do XXD on screenshot one and then pipe that into less to take a look at it and we do see that we have the PNG header for this file so that looks good um, sometimes these things uh, can be spoofed. You can spoof the magic bytes. It's what the, the first few bytes of a file is, is called in order to identify what type of file it is. Uh, but I'm not seeing anything in here. This looks like it might literally be a PNG file. Every time I see a, a curly brace, I always think, oh, is there a flag in there? Uh, but I'm not seeing a flag, so that's okay. Uh, we can take a look with, at that file with exit tool and see if there's anything in there. And it doesn't look like there's any information in there either and it's also identifying this as a image or PNG file so uh, let's go back through file scan and we're going to let's grep for users on file scan because typically in Windows you're gonna have the C colon users uh, path in the user profile so we're just gonna grep for users on file scan and see what else we get out of that. There's probably going to be a lot of stuff, but uh, uh, so we'll pipe it into less just to see. So we have uh, a log file. We have a flag not here. Dot lnk. Okay, so Eminem doesn't have the flag yet. And we also have another JPEG. Galf. JPEG. I don't. Not sure what Galf is. Makes me think of Gandalf, but that's not quite the same. So I'm going to copy this. Uh, that way we're ready for it. We also see our screenshot one. Uh, let's just scroll through here a little further and see if we can find anything. We also know that there was another user, um, Slim Shady, that we're going to be looking for. So uh, before we get too crazy with all of this, let's. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Here's a important dot text. All right, so let's keep that in the back of our minds for a second. That's in Slim Shady's desktop, so we're gonna we're gonna look for that in a moment. But let's go ahead and dump this uh, this offset real quick just to see just to see if there's anything in here. So now we have the galf.jpg, which we had the screenshot.jpg before. So now if we do a file on galf. Uh, this is a JPEG file. Uh, we can run exif tool on galf.jpg and see if there's any data in there. It doesn't look like anything there. And with PNG files, you're not able to run tools like steghide. But let's take a look at um, uh, the information on galf. Well, let's do screenshot just so I can I can prove this to you real quick. It's it's not going to recognize the PNG format. Um, don't be thrown off by the dot dat. This this thing it knows that it's a PNG, so that's not going to matter. But if we do steghide info on galf, uh, we should be able to get something. And it looks like there is some embedded data, so we're going to say yes. Enter passphrase. I don't have one, so I'm going to see if there's no passphrase. Uh, there is an embedded file called lmao.txt so we can try to extract that information and see if it's actually got something here for us so extract and sf to say our steg file and we don't have a passphrase but if we do this we were able to get the information about the embedded file without the passphrase so we're able to extract this and if we cat lmao.txt says move on bro there's nothing here okay all right fair enough so we don't need that okay and since we do have some images we can just use I have gnome or I have gnome 
because I think it's actually pronounced GNOME, not GNOME, uh, on these things. So let's take a look at the screenshot and see if there's any interesting information in there. And it looks like just a screenshot of Google. Okay. Uh, we will probably need Google in a few moments here. And let's take a look at GALF and GLAF. How about GALF? Um, and this is a picture of the Joker. <laughs> so, okay. All right. I guess that was where the LMAO came from. He's pulling a joke on us, <laughs> thinking we were going to find something. But it, it's cool because you, you, you still learn something here that you you may find uh, some type of steganography or something in a file that you get. But if you recall from a minute ago, we had that file important.txt. And if we look at our challenge description, we can see that oh, my dog's trying to come in. All right, you might hear my dog. He wanted to come say hello. So anyway, um, if we look at this again, he also deleted a very important file of mine. So if since the file name was important.txt, we, we can look for that. That's possibly going to have our flag. So let's grip for important on file scan. And here is a link to the file, and uh, which is a Windows desktop shortcut, the .lnk, and then we have the important.txt. So if we take this offset and copy this, we should be able to dump this out. Oh, forgot the in. All right. Okay, so if we take a look, we don't actually have a file named important.txt, and that's because this file most likely was deleted. Uh, so that's that's not a good thing. Uh, typically, um, if you find um, a file like this, you try to download it from the offset address that you find, and there's nothing there. Uh, most likely, it's going to be a deleted file. We know that in Windows, um, we will have the recycle bin. So perhaps if we do a grep for recycle, uh, let's do a grep-i, because I, I don't know if it's going to be capitalized or not, or if it's going to be in all caps. So we're going to grep for recycle on file scan, and let's see if we get anything returned here. I don't really see much information so let's go back to our browser and we'll open up a new tab and let's look up for um, in windows what we have is called the master file table or mft uh, so if we take if we do a google search for mft table this is going to be a table with every single file on the system so actually let's do mft table windows and see if we can find something here about it so according to google the master file table stores the information required to retrieve files from an ntfs partition a file may have one or more mft records and can contain one or more attributes in ntfs a file reference is the mft segment reference of the base file record so this may be something that we have to look for and if we do master file table forensics uh, the master file table is located at the beginning of a volume and provides an index of all live and active data that is present on the drive these files refer to an existing in the live clusters of that drive uh, we should be able to grab any deleted files off of the master file table uh, there's another tool called test disk I believe test disk and uh, what that does what that lets you do is actually recover files that were deleted from a system and I assume they do that based off of the master file table so let's go over here and look at our volatility help menu once again so if we take a look at these plugins here uh, let's see actually let's do a if we if you hit the question mark or shift slash you know question mark you can search up and let's look for mft uh, in tmux you can do that you can search up in tmux a forward slash will search down uh, question mark will search up so we do have a mft parser 
and it scans for and parses potential MFT entries. So let's take a look at the MFT parser. And let's see what type of information we get here. And I'm actually going to redirect this into a file because this could potentially be a lot of information. Um, there's, it's going to get every file in the system. So we'll let this run and we'll take a look at the output once we get that uh, file put out. Okay, so we have our MFT parser file, and as you can see, it's quite large, actually a lot larger than FileScan. So we know how much information FileScan puts out, so MFT parser puts out quite a bit more. So let's do a grep for important on MFT parser and see if we can find something. So we do see that data in there. So now let's go ahead and let's just run less on MFT parser and see if we can find that. So we're gonna give a forward slash and then look up for important.txt. And here we have uh, an entry and we get some object information and the data within that information looks like it is our flag so we're going to go ahead and i'm going to just do a split pane here and i'm going to go into ctf mem labs lab four uh, you may hear my dog barking in the background he is uh, not happy at the moment nobody's playing with him and i'm going to have to just uh, type this out by hand so i'm going to invim on flag.txt and it looks like it is INCTF, oh, INCTF one underscore is not equal to two, but this doesn't make sense and there's the closing curly brace so it looks like we do have and good work okay <laughs> good work all right so it looks like we did find our flag so one is not equal to two but this doesn't make sense uh yes i would agree with that <laughs> all right uh, so this was a medium challenge on the MemLab CTF, and I'm going to go ahead. I'm, I'm curious about the clipboard plugin. I wonder if there was any information in that. Uh, so I'm going to do a Google search for volatility uh, clipboard dump clipboard. Volatility Labs. Let's see if this link has anything here. Uh, that's very white. Sorry for the uh, blinding color there. So it looks like blah blah blah. Trace RDP activity. Here's how the structures appear in Windows Seven. So it looks like they're walking the user handle table. I've never done this before, so this will be kind of interesting. So you can enumerate the MM session space, find the tag shared info without PEBs. Okay, so they're giving us an example here on this image file clipboard. And is this the data or is this something they inputted? As you can see, a user session in Wednesday zero has placed a Unicode string, blah, 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 into the clipboard. Okay, see if look out is not shown. The following plugin. Microsoft Word and Microsoft Paint were open. A small sketch was created. Please note you could carve images with foremost or scalpel, but the point here would be to identify specific images as one in the clipboard. So I guess these would be the objects that are in the clipboard. Is there a way you can extract that? Clipboard 
dash V. So if we give it a dash V full path to be copied. So let's try that with the dash V and see if we get anywhere. I don't know if this is actually going to get us any information or not, but I kind of want to try it out and uh, give you, the viewer, some opportunity to learn something along with me. So, so let's give it a clipboard dash V and see if we get some more information. Uh, that doesn't look like anything different than we got before. Did I miss something? Maybe I will just have to do some more information digging on this on my own. And um, I would challenge you to do the same because I am not I'm not too familiar with this plugin. As I said before, I'm really not a, a digital forensics guy. I think this stuff is very cool. It's interesting. I can do some really basic level stuff like this, but uh, that's getting a little advanced for me. So um, anyway, with that out of the way, we do have our flag. So yeah, uh, that's it. That's the MemLab CTF Lab 4 video. And hopefully, now that uh, life has kind of settled down a little more, I will be able to uh, put out some more videos. And I do thank you for subscribing. If you're a new subscriber, I thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Please leave a like, a comment. Please subscribe. And, uh, you know, let me know what you think of the video. I know I've had uh, most of my comments, aside from the spammy, can you please hack my game? comments have been uh, geared towards these uh, MemLab Forensic CTF videos. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to do some more of that type of stuff. I really have been getting into more red teaming and pen testing type content um, or just challenges in labs. Uh, Hack the Box has become my new obsession. So uh, you may see some content like that, but only for machines that are retired. If I can solve them, I'll, I'll put out some Hack the Box videos. Uh, they're a lot different than Try Hack Me. But I will have some more Try Hack Me content coming out soon. I do plan to finish out uh, five and six of the MemLab CTF labs. And uh, with that out of the way, I just, I really appreciate you guys for watching. Thanks for sticking around. Please subscribe, please like, please share with your friends. And uh, that's it, you guys take care. Thank you.